What's up, e skaters? It's Neil with Big Kids, and on this channel, we talk about DIY tips, vendors, and the electric skateboard community. If you're new here, please consider subscribing to see more videos just like this one. And don't forget to check the show notes below for any notes or links I leave in the description. This is part two of my DIY electric skateboard build where I put together the battery and the electronics. But before I do, I owe one winner a prize from my last raffle giveaway. And the winner of the one-fifth scale hoverboard from the movie Back to the Future is... Jacob! Jacob, congratulations, and thank you to everybody that actually participated in the raffle giveaway. We do have another raffle giveaway that's going to be sponsored by Build Kit Boards. Build Kit Boards is a DIY eSkate vendor with a lot of experience and awesome reputation in the eSkate community. Click the link in the description to see how you could win these 90mm flywheel clones as well as these awesome motor mounts that you could use for your own DIY build. Now let's get into the video. To power the electric skateboard, we want to take our two 5S LiPo batteries and make it into one 10S LiPo pack. Um, each LiPo has a positive terminal and a negative terminal. So by connecting the positive lead of one battery to the negative lead in the opposite battery, we'll join these LiPos in series, making it a 10S or a 42 volt battery pack. So basically how are we going to do that? Huh? Well, we're going to do it with this. This is called a series connector, and I'm gonna show you how to make that right now. So here's what we're gonna need. Some 10 gauge wire, four millimeter HTX connectors, at least a 100 watt soldering iron, soldering flux, electric soldering rosin, some wire cutters, and some tweezers. First measure the wire to about three or four inches. Cut three equal sizes, two pieces in black and one in red. Then you're going to need to break out those 4mm HTX connectors so that we could solder them to those wires. But before we do that, make sure you're in a ventilated area. So the first step, we're going to want to make sh sure to outline this. We want the positive of this LiPo battery to go into the negative terminal of this LiPo battery. Um, on this, you'll see that they have one side that's a male and one side that's a female. Uh, the female is actually a little bit larger, and then the male is a little bit smaller. That's what she said. Or he said. Um, so in order for us to connect these two, we're going to have to make sure the placement is correct. So male to female, and vice versa. And there you go. So now that we've done that, we're going to trace back this positive wire, connect it to the first connector that we've connected. I like to dip the exposed wire ends into some flux. This will help soldering rosin seep fully into the exposed ends of the wire. Also, you might want to use some kind of helping hands, or if you don't have any, just use some pliers because the wires might get hot. Keep your iron tip on the exposed wire for a few seconds. Then add the solder and make sure the solder melts and seeps into the exposed wire. What also helps is tinning the 4mm HTX connectors. Heat the metal point of the connector and add the solder. You can expect a small pool of solder to accumulate inside the connection point and make sure to do the same for both sides. Now let's solder the positive wire to the correct terminal on the connector by heating up both the terminal and the wire. It's vital to connect the wire to the correct terminal. So if you need to, go back to the battery and map out which terminal on the series connector will be connecting to the positive side of the battery. So one thing that you're gonna want is heat shrink. These um, bare like terminals, they can be real dangerous if they touch uh, things because it's the, the current is actually going through these. So uh, you're gonna wanna cover this with an insulation, um, and this is the heat shrink right here. Now that that's complete, you could connect this side, and it should connect nicely. 
take it out right away because this is pretty much live wire. I mean, these are too, but they're kind of insulated and covered. If you connect that together to this negative, you can see a huge spark damage your battery, hurt yourself possibly, so always unplug after you're using it just for reference. So this side, we're gonna wanna make sure that the connector is correct on this side. We want this positive side that we're connecting to go into the negative. Uh, the negative is using the smaller sized uh, terminal. And so in order for this to fit correctly, uh, the male to the female once again. So in this case, this is going to connect the larger side on here. So that's what we're gonna do next. So before I do anything, we're gonna be closing up this connection. And so I recommend putting that heat shrink on before soldering the wire to the connection. So my soldering iron is tinned, the end of this wire is tinned, uh, and then we've also tinned um, the end of this connector. Uh, lastly, I have the heat shrink on, so let's connect these two. Uh... So these are done. The best way to tell if something is soldered well, number one, is that you heated both uh, connections. You want to heat up uh, the connection on here and then heat it on here. So you got to keep that iron on that place for a pretty long time. And then you really could just pull at it as hard as you can. And if you can't take that off, um, you've done a good job. So let's slide that heat shrink over the connection. There you got it. That's the first part. So here we got our setup as for now. So once I am going to plug this in, I don't recommend you do this at home just yet, but for the sake of showing you now, you have the positive wire going all the way through here into the negative wire, and then one positive wire that is loose. On this side, you also have a negative wire that's loose. So one positive and one negative will make this basically into one big battery. But now you have two ends uh, that are loose and you don't want to touch them. You don't want to touch them together because uh, you get a big spark, maybe explode some stuff, which is not good. The negative wire on this side is going to be the negative wire for this big battery. I want to put this negative wire here to kind of show that's going to be the negative wire going out. On this side, we have the positive wire going out of here. So I'd like to put this over here. And now we have one big battery going to where? These are going into uh, to basically power the VESC. But what I'm going to be putting in between there is an on and off switch. These are the female. And they're going to be go, and the male is going to be from the VESC. So those connect to the VESC, and then, like I said, the connector is going to be going in between. So what we're left with here is a male XT90 connector, and the best way uh, to connect that is uh, with the female side. Let's follow this again. Uh, the positive is always marked with red, so we're going to put that on that side like that and the negative is always marked with black. What I'm doing here is just aligning these two connectors to remember how it's all going to flow. So positive goes into this side which is the flat side and then the positive is on this side which is also the flat side of this connector. This is the negative which goes on to kind of the triangle side and then this is the con negative connector that goes into this kind of triangle side. So here's the diagram of what we have to create next. Let's go!
Again, we're gonna wanna put our heat shrink on before soldering because we're not gonna be able to get it on after we close up that circuit. So here's where we are at this point. We've finished everything up. On this side, we want the positive to go into this positive and connect into this negative. So let's connect those. And now that we have this XT90 connector, we wanna connect that to the, the button and the VESC. And so I've matched that up. This is the positive. It's gone into this negative portion. And then this positive is the loose end going up into here. And we're gonna match that up with the positive on this end. Same on this side. You've got the negative coming out on this side, going up here into the negative of this terminal. And that will go match up with here. So you can actually connect these two together and nothing will explode. So what I found putting my first electric skateboard together was that coming around to finding an enclosure for all of the components, the batteries and the vests is very, very important, but it isn't cheap. Uh, so I did find an easier solution. Um, this is just some Tupperware. The nice thing about it is that it has these clamps on the side, four clamps, which I think are gonna keep it really secure, and it fits all of my electronics. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna bolt it down to right here, and um, hopefully that does the trick. I'm spraying this 3M rubberized paint onto a Tupperware container. This enclosure will serve as a storage and protection for the batteries and the electronics. I chose a Tupperware container that will open and shut easily in case I need to service the electronics or charge the batteries. Plus it's a cheap solution. So I've done a couple things off camera right now that I should have recorded, but um, the, the enclosure is all dry. And then what I ended up doing is uh, just taking some, um, some bolts and uh, drilling some holes through the wood of this deck so that they pop out on this side. And then what I did is I put on uh, nuts that actually fit into these to keep this all fastened together. Here you see some, um, some Velcro. These Velcro straps are going to help with uh, keeping the battery in place. So I put one on the battery and then one on the bottom portion of here. I actually put one up here too to uh, put the vesk, and then one over here for uh, the button. So the VESC uh, controls the voltage as well as the amps sent to the motor. And it has these uh, wires called phase wires. Um, the bullet connectors in these actually match up with the bullet connectors on the motor. Uh, these are also phase wires. And um, you can actually plug them into any of the um, plug uh, the connections that you have over here. Uh, it doesn't matter. But uh, what you're gonna wanna make sure in the end is that this motor is spinning the correct way. If it's not spinning the correct way, you can always switch the, the uh, phase wires around until it actually does. But I've already color coded these, so I know that when I plug these in in this sequence, um, the motor will go forward. So how is this gonna get powered? It gets powered by plugging a power source like the batteries that we have. But before we do that, I want to use an on and off switch. Um, and this uh, will plug into this on and off switch that I actually have right here. All I did was drill a hole and then uh, insert this switch. And then on the other side of the switch is some threads and um, you just have to screw this nut on so that it can screw in nicely. So that plugs into here. 
And then we're going to want to match, we're going to plug this in so this says out. So the power is going into here and the power is going out to here into the VESC. So here I have uh, the LiPo batteries connected to the series connector we made. Um, we're going to want to plug this into the in portion, if you could see that right there, it says in of the plug. So that's all plugged up now. And we should able to be able to press this button. So just so you could see the sequence of electronics, we have the LiPo batteries, two separate LiPo batteries, which are connected to the series connectors, which are then connected to the on off switch. And then the switch is drilled right here. The on off switch connects to the VESC and the VESC connects to the motor. All right, so there you have it. I hope that this electronics and battery tutorial was helpful. And because it took me so long to explain, I'll be continuing the VESC and the RC remote configuration in a part three DIY video. If you're looking to join the raffle giveaway, don't forget to check out the link below because I'm giving away motor mounts and wheels. So there's a chance for two winners. In the meantime, if you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below. And as always, thanks for checking out my channel and subscribe to see more videos like this one. Peace. Oh, hey, all right, don't forget to check out this video, part one of my tutorial, or this video on how to balance charge your batteries. And if you haven't noticed, I'm wearing some new gear. This is some Eastgate gear uh, brought to you by Big Kids. Check the link below to purchase your own. See ya.